I'm here with Clara Ritger, a 2009 Most Valuable Student Scholarship recipient and a former member of our Elk Scholar Advisory Board. In fact, an inaugural member of the Elk Scholar Advisory Board. That's right. But Clara, you're here this weekend in a very different capacity. Why don't you tell us about that? I am here this weekend as the film director. So my job is basically to tell the story of what it means to receive the Elk Scholarship and how it enables students to achieve their dreams. Now let's back up a little bit and talk about wh uh, why we tapped you to do this. <laughs> well, uh, I am now working as a, a documentary filmmaker and assistant producer at a video production company. So this is what I do on a daily basis. And not the first uh, film that you've done for us a couple years ago at Hoop Shoot, right? Correct, correct. I kicked off all of the Elks filmmaking by uh, helping out with the Hoop Shoot videos. So I was talking with some of the students who were part of the contest, and it was really fun. They were all very excited, and it's gotten way more professional since I was doing it as a one woman band. So, so we brought Claire in, and we gave her a very difficult task because uh, last year was the inaugural Leadership Weekend, and we produced a film on it. And now we're saying, Clara, come on in and do the same thing, but make it different. So uh, Clara, how are you, what's your approach to making it different? Yeah, so last year it was really about this is, this is what the weekend is. It was following you know, every step of the agenda, um, everything that the students were doing from the scavenger hunt to the trivia games to you know, seeing them in the room after their tough interviews with the judges. And this year, it's really focused on opportunities. It's focused on, you know, who are you as a student and what do you hope to be able to do um, you know, in college and after college, and how is the Elks making that possible for you? Right, and I think the approach last year sort of made sense because Leadership Weekend was new to our constituents, so we wanted yeah. to show them what it was all about. Uh, and now it's, it's about telling those stories. And mm -hmm. uh, again, not an easy challenge because there's 20, 20 stories to tell and you need to boil it down to you know, relatively short film. What are we thinking? Oh gosh, probably three minutes. Three minutes, okay. Yeah, that's, that's pretty much the standard. I mean, I think that if you have a captivating story to tell these days, you can go on for much longer than that. Uh, and it depends on where it's gonna show too. If you're showing it at a convention or something, you can, you know, they're gonna stay there and watch that film, so it could be 20 minutes we'll if you want. We'll lock the doors. Yeah, exactly. Right. Right. <laughs> um, but if it's going online, I think, you know, probably for this three minutes is the sweet spot because the goal really is to is to inspire other students who might want to apply for this um, by showing the stories of students who are already receiving it. And to make the, the our constituents feel good about the work that we're doing as well. That's an important piece of it. Exactly. I think that one of the beauties of this film is that it allows the donors and the Elks uh, members to see students who they otherwise would not get the chance to meet. So they get to see, like, if I'm donating this money every year toward the scholarship fund, here's 20 deserving recipients and here's what they're going to go on and do as a result of my donation. So it's extremely empowering. So you are not only not only directing, but you were sort of sitting in this chair for the 20 interviews I, I that was. we filmed, right? I was, yeah. And I think you did, probably did a better job than I did. <laughs> That's not true. <laughs> and uh, like, so how difficult is it to coax those stories out? It's, it's difficult. You know, everyone is different uh, and everyone has different reactions to the camera. The camera can be pretty intimidating. Mm -hmm. um, our viewers can't see the set that we're on right mm -hmm. now but there's a lot of equipment. So I think that you know some of the challenge is to get them at least past that so that they feel comfortable and natural on camera. But then even then, not everyone is comfortable telling their story. You know, This isn't reality right. TV where you're getting an inside scoop into their entire life. They're gonna tell as much as they want to tell about their personal story. And a lot of these students have extremely powerful stories to tell. So that's, that was really the trick for this morning. And it's not like with, with a reality TV show, uh, they've signed on for that. Exactly. And here, these people just want help going to school. And we're like, by the way, we're going to shoot a reality you know, documentary about, about the weekend. Absolutely, yeah. And, and it's difficult to feel natural when you have a giant microphone hanging over your head, right? <laughs> yeah, I had to keep yeah. telling students, don't look up at right. the microphone. Yeah, right. and you can see what I just did. So. And how do you feel about the way it's gone so far? It's very successful. I absolutely think that students were were open to the questions we were asking and were interested in in getting their story out there and in saying, hey, you know, this is what I've gone through in my life. This is what I hope to do as a result of that. And you know, a lot of these students, it was so insane how many of them, what they planned to do with the rest of their life was informed by their experiences as a child. 
And so, you know, getting them to talk about that and then getting them to put it in the context of the Elks, it was, they were more than happy to do that because they're just so grateful to be here. This is an amazing leadership weekend. And do you hear, like, are there any of the stories that you hear that and you're like, man, that's me. Did you feel like find yourself connecting with any of these <sighs> oh, students? Oh, gosh. I don't know if I was as self-aware as they, they are. Um, I, I certainly wasn't as sure as what I was going to do after school. I had no, I, I had no idea I would be sitting here <laughs> producing the Elks film, we'll put it that way. And a lot of them seem like they really have a sense of, of their life journey and, and where they're headed. Um, but I do think that in the context of knowing that their life journey included service, I do see, I, I definitely saw that myself in that. That was me because I knew, I like them, I knew that my, the opportunities that I had had would not have been possible if others had not given so generously to me. And I knew that I wanted to make that happen for other people. And I saw that in all of the students I interviewed today. The neat thing about a, a weekend like this too is it can inspire you in ways that you didn't foresee. Now last year, you joined us as part of the weekend as our dance leader for the dinner crew, <laughs> and also as a member of one of the judging panels, correct? Yes, yes. So we like to have a scholar leader um, on, on each of the, the selection panels, and, and Clara was on one of the panels last year, the boys panel. And what happened after that? Yeah, I, so I, I came to this weekend and I had been doing, I was a reporter. I was covering Congress at the time, um, working on Capitol Hill, having a lot of fun, enjoying getting to you know meet very important people who are making very important decisions or not making very important decisions about the future of our country and you know there was a little bit of a disconnect i wasn't sure that it was for me i i knew that i wanted to be doing to tell to be telling stories but i didn't know that i that that was the place that i wanted to be doing it and you know i didn't really know where i was going to go from there and getting to meet all of the students because I was a judge so I, I got to do something very similar to what I'm doing now and I got to interview them and ask them about you know what are their what inspires them what motivates them what are their hopes and dreams for the future and I just really felt inspired by how much they wanted to accomplish and it made me really reflect on what I wanted to do and I actually came away from that weekend realizing that this was what I wanted to do, that I, I, wanted to, I wanted to be telling stories, but I wanted to be telling them on film. And I wanted to be telling real people's stories in a longer format than, than you know, the news of Capitol Hill necessarily allows you to do. And so I started applying for jobs. The Elks were one of my recommendations. And thankfully, after a glowing recommendation, mm -hmm. I got the job that I have today. It's been great. And so what are you doing now? So now I work as an assistant producer at a video production company in the DC area. And a lot of what we do is corporate video production. Um, we do some nonprofit work, trade association work, but what we're doing is, is largely similar to this, telling the stories of companies and their people or the social responsibility um, initiatives that they're taking on, that kind of thing. And I'm going to do a horrible job of setting this up, but um, we got an email a few months ago uh, from Clara, and it was about a really exciting opportunity uh, that she was shooting for. Uh, and it was to participate in something called the Millennial Train Project. Yeah. Right? Yep. And she, well, why don't you tell us? Because, uh, it's yeah. Her story. So, um, you know, Coming off of off of taking my new job, um, this was back in September. I saw this opportunity with the Millennial Trains project to basically you, you get on a train trip across America, um, and only 20 people can get on this train, and you get to do whatever you want on that trip. There's you have to advance some sort of a project that is designed to benefit communities or, or designed around communities, and. I already knew exactly what I wanted to do. I'd been, I'd known I wanted to do this documentary for a really long time, and this just seemed like the perfect way to do it, the perfect mechanism for doing it. So I, I debated for about a month whether or not I was even gonna do it, because it was really gonna put myself out there, because the way that you get to get on the train trip is by crowdfunding. You have to crowdfund $5,000 to cover your seat on the train. And you know, why don't you explain what crowdfunding is for our constituents? Sure, crowdfunding is, it's a new thing, sharing economy kind of thing, where um, there's websites now like Kickstarter and Indiegogo where you, you can go on and create sort of a profile and a project pitch and, you know, largely how, how new companies, startup companies try to get 
venture capital funding, you're doing it but through the crowd, through anybody who's online who happens upon your project and wants to donate some money. So a lot of the way that you get there is through lots of people seeing your project and donating small amounts of money. Um, so that's that's crowdfunding, and and so I would really have to you know ask people to donate money, and I I wasn't sure that I wanted to do that, but got over that, decided to to shoot a pitch video, write my story about what I wanted to do, and and put it out there. And so what the documentary that I'm doing is. It's on the role of restaurants in revitalizing neighborhoods. And so the train trip this year is across the American South. And so in each city that I stop in, I'm going to visit one neighborhood in the South and basically tell the stories of the chefs and restaurant owners and communities that are in these revitalizing neighborhoods that are in transition and talk about basically the role that the restaurant plays um, economically or not in sharing that um, I guess sh not necessarily sharing that wealth, but, but sharing that change and, and being a part of the change of that community and how much that's intertwined and, and how much that's disconnected. And so I expect as I stop in every city for there to be very different stories. I think, I think revitalization is going to be going really well in some neighborhoods and I think it's going to be going very poorly in other neighborhoods where you see residents being pushed out as these new hip restaurants come in. So it's going to be an interesting project to go on. And so I had reached out to you to just kind of let you guys know, hey, this is this is what I'm working on, and you guys were actually one of my first backers, and uh, it was amazing because with your support, I my my numbers skyrocketed for the amount of money that I was raising, and so it brought a lot of momentum early on to the campaign, and I successfully ended up making it to the 5,000, and so I'm going to be going on that trip in May. And for the record, we were there waiting. To, we were waiting to push more money in at the end if necessary, but it wasn't necessary because it was a great idea, a great project, spoke to a lot of people because you had no problem raising the money. Yeah, I, I've received only positive feedback about the project, so it's very exciting. Let me, just a general question about um, being a documentarian. Sure. What, what, you have an idea, and then do you have, to, to what extent does the idea drive where the story goes versus you know, the interviews and, and the information you're collecting driving the story? That's a great question. I think, I mean, you have to have a strong idea, right? And I think the reason that it got funded is because I have a strong idea. But at the same time, I think it's going to be very different as I go into each one of these neighborhoods and it's, it's going to be driven by the interviews. I'm looking to tell a good story on this topic. So I think, I think what's important, or I think the way I look at it is, is have, doing a documentary is largely about defining this is what I want my documentary to be about and I'm going to ask questions that surround that but I'm going to let the stories unfold as as the interviews go on and the way that I choose to tell the story is going to change. I think it's going to be really fun to play with um, the music, with the speed of the documentary because I'm going to do it as a web series. I want to do an episode from every city so it's going to be fun to let each episode kind of have its own feel um, depending on the stories that are told by the people in those communities. And it's six stops? Six stops. Can so you tell be, us where you're stopping? I can. Uh, so it, I'm going to start, so I say that it's across the south. It's, it's mostly across the south, but there's two deviations in terms of where the train starts and because of, you know, where train tracks run, I guess. Um, so it starts in Los Angeles, and then we go to Austin, San Antonio, New Orleans, Atlanta, and end in D.C. And we're going to promote uh, the web series through our channels. I'm sure there's regular places to follow along. Yeah, you can follow through my channels. Um, and her channels are here, and mine are here. <laughs> okay, and so uh, any idea what, what that's going to be titled, what your, or does that kind of depend on what you have? So I had to come up with a title for the, the crowdfunding page, and it's just going to be the title of the series. Uh, I'm calling it The Great American Cooking Story. Okay. That's sort of the way my approach to writing is, which is how I started my career as a writer, is title first, <laughs> then story. If um, it doesn't match up later, yeah, meh. Yeah, then you can fix it. But um, Any thoughts on what the title of this film is going to be called this weekend? Ooh, that's a good question. No, I have no initial I loss. I stumped you. You did stump me. Have you ever lost a small animal? Oh my god, <laughs> Jim. <laughs> I can't get on interviews with you anymore. <laughs> yes, I've lost a small animal. Well, I am excited to see both projects. I'm excited to see the way uh, this, this film turns out about the weekend. It's going to be great. And our director's cut interview. Yeah. 
And hopefully, I'm people watch them. Especially excited to uh, to see the uh, the cooking story. Yeah, and, that'll be coming out this summer. And to continue to follow your career. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Clara Ritker, everybody.